I think I did want to go over question one because it um, it kind of give, uh, set you up for thinking about some of the later questions where it's more of um, uh, kinematics question about basically, uh, well, it's basically calculus question. Because um, in kinematics, what we, so this is something, um, different people will need a different amount of uh, review. And what it comes down to is that a lot of what we cover in the uh, chapter, chapter, uh, chapter three, is something that was covered in your calculus class, but a lot of people do need to review. And sometimes the first time you see it, it didn't make a lot of sense. So seeing it again for a second time is useful. So what you hopefully learned in your calculus class is you can describe motion of an object by describing its position as a function of time. And when you describe its velocity as a function of time, that's a derivative of position and time derivative. And when you describe acceleration of an object as a function of time, then that's another time derivative of velocity. So if you go back to all the way back to position, then acceleration is the second position, uh, second derivative of position is a function of time. And uh, you've probably seen this many times, both in your calculus class and in this class. And you might know this as a matter of formula. And where some people struggle is, how do you apply that to a given question where it might be described in words? So, um, Oh, wait, but this is not the question where you need to know that. <laughs> I probably should have read the question. Um, but uh, let me just uh, go through answering this question. And uh, let me try to find a question where you do need to use this uh, knowledge of calculus. <laughs> so for this question, you didn't need that. Um, so the question gives you position as a function of time. That's always good to know. And this is the place where um, uh, peop I, uh, a lot of people need uh, time to practice and build up your muscle in problem solving, where you want to be able to translate what the question is asking into a mathematical expression. So it asks, at what time does the particle cross the origin? And if you're just staring at this question, doesn't talk about crossing the origin. So this is where you have to think through. You have to imagine a particle moving. And I guess initially starts out with a positive velocity. So you kind of have to visualize it initially moving to the right. And I guess with, um, um, or I can't, no, sorry. It doesn't begin by moving to the right. So you have to be careful there, sorry. Um, I'm still on that velocity mindset. Um, if I have this number line <laughs> with uh, x uh, starting at zero here, then I have a particle which is starts at positive position. And then over time, it goes into more negative position. So this particle is actually moving to the left. So you can imagine at some point in time, it'll cross the zero point. And that's what it means by cross the origin. So having gone through this visualization, that's where I'm hoping you, this visualization, that's when I'm hoping you all realize what the phrase cross the origin means. And that's really the uh, most challenging part of physics problem solving. It basically looks like all those word problems you had in your math class. And from what I hear, that's where a lot of people have struggled in your math class. And um, <laughs> the thing that's challenging about physics is we put a bunch of those problems that just ex exactly the problems you struggled in and put, put it all in, in one class. And that's what you need to do <laughs> for the entire semester. And you will eventually get better at it. So I, uh, yeah. So cross the origin. That means that when x is equal to 0. That's what it means to cross the origin. And once you get that, then the rest of the math isn't that hard. 
because once you get that, then you can write it out. Okay, cross the origin. So I'm looking for the time, um, looking for the, uh, I'm looking for when, uh, 2.7 minus 6.2 T is equal to zero. So, um, so I have one equation, one unknown, I can solve that. I can say, um, so I can move T over and divide by 6.2, then what I get is T is equal to 2.7 divided by 6.2. And I think in this question, we are, the way it's given is kind of sloppy with the units. So I'm just gonna assume it's in seconds. <laughs> um, so let me, I, I can't do that one in my head and it's not with the precision that the question will demand that I do. So let me do that on a calculator. Uh, 2.7 divided by 6.2. So 0 0.43, uh, they want rounded to one decimal place. So 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.4. Um, you can submit questions in part. So you can just question, uh, submit for one question, one part that you did, and you can get the answer that it's correct. And then, um, um, so that you have some guidance on answering the remainder of the question. This is actually a feature that's new in my open math. Uh, the old version didn't used to have that. Uh, but I'm actually gonna keep that, um, wait, do I need? Okay, I guess I don't need that answer for part B, so I'll just leave that. Um, okay, so that's uh, for part A. <laughs> and the part B asks for displacement and I think this is a little bit easier because when you hear the word displacement, you remember the definition of displacement. Uh, oddly enough, I think when the, the uh, we use more technical words than the kind of correspondence between the mathematical material that we cover and the the English description, it's kind of simpler, so it's uh, actually easier to do. So. It's asking for displacement. Uh, this is the definition of displacement. X, the final exposition minus the initial exposition. Um, so my final time is six seconds. Initial time is three seconds. So I just plug in the numbers. So let me just use my calculator to calculate X final, which is, um, Um, which is 2.7 minus 6.2 times 6 minus 34.5. So minus 34.5 meters. And um, let me do the X initial. And there, there's actually an easier way to do it, but I'll just do it the long way so that uh, yeah, 2.7 minus 6.2 times 3. So that's the x initial position. So x initial is equal to minus 15.9 meters. So the displacement is the difference between them. And keep in mind the signs because I'm going to end up with the negative answer. And in the way the question said the word displacement, my guess is it expects a negative answer. So I'm going to keep to that. So minus 34.5 minus 15.9. Wait, did that wrong? <laughs> uh, minus 34.5 minus, minus 15.9. So that's equal to minus 18.6. Make sure um, you know how to use your calculator. Um, so this difference here is equal to minus 18.6 meters. So let me put that in. Um, hopefully I got it right. If not, doing this live, it'll be very embarrassing to get it wrong. <laughs> um, okay, it's correct. <laughs> um, 
So, so that's the question. Well, uh, I guess even easier questions are taking a bit long. Um, let me find one question where I can actually use this calculus material that I wrote out. And um, I want to spend some of the time working out a question where you have to set up, um, where, where you have to set up your system of equations. So, um, looking for a question where I can use the calculus material. Um, yeah, it's the same deal with this one. And I think this is better for me to cover next Monday. So let me do question five here. Um, it says a particle moves in a straight line with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second and constant acceleration 31 meters per second. And I guess um, technically you don't have to use calculus. <laughs> and I think in the interest of time, I also want. But the practice you would be getting here is um, you need, uh, you have to turn the sparse bit of information that's given in the question into mathematical expressions that um, where you're supplying a lot of that information from your memory, what you remember from reading, what you remember from learning. And one reason I said that I probably don't need to use calculus is because <laughs> it says constant acceleration. So that means you could use, um, um, you, you could use the kinematics formula. So let me sketch that out. And I think I'm just gonna use calculus. Um, so because it says constant acceleration, then I hope you realize uh, you can use the formulas that are derived in your textbook. That says the position is the initial, as a function of time, is the initial position plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared, and the velocity is the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So you can use these equations in the same way I used it for the previous question. Um, and yeah, and um, that, so for the displacement, you can use the, you can use the definition that change in the position is the final x position. In this case, it will be x at time equals five minus the initial x position. And I guess for simplicity's sake, you can say initial x position is zero. That um, makes all this a little bit simpler. Um, so that's one way you can do it. And, <laughs> but since I brought up calculus, let me use uh, some of our knowledge of calculus. So to use um, calculus here, you use the, uh, your knowledge of the fact that velocity is related to the position by derivative. That reversing this relationship, what that means is change in position is given by the integral of velocity as a function uh, with respect to time. So integrate this from time equals zero to uh, final time. So in our case, time equals five seconds. That should give you the answer. And um, so staring at this, what I see is I need an explicit uh, function of velocity as a function of time. So let me use this <laughs> rather than doing one other integral to uh, write in that information, what velocity is as a function of time. So velocity as a function of time is the initial velocity. And um, at this point, I think it's uh, okay to plug in the numbers here because there isn't too much algebra to be done. Uh, plus the acceleration, 31 meter per second squared times time 
and I'm doing the integral with respect to time, with time going from zero to five seconds. So the so you do the uh, find the antiderivative. Um, by the way, almost all the integrals we do in this class will be basically polynomial integrals. So um, if you're worried about memorizing complicated integral formulas from calculus one or even calculus two, no need. Most of the integrals we do in this class will be reasonably simple. So the first term, it's just constant. So the antiderivative uh, 30t, so 30 meters per second times t, and I evaluate that from t equals zero to five seconds plus the second term, it's a t raised to the power of one. So the antiderivative is one half t squared. Um, so what it should be is 31 meter per second squared times one half t squared. And one thing I want you to get into habit of is whenever you have an answer, try to see if you can double check that this answer is correct. And with the integrals, what you should be doing is you uh, do the derivative in your head. Then in my head, I can do one half t squared, uh, derivative, two comes down, so I get t. That's what I started out with, so I didn't make a mistake in the integral. Uh, going from t equals zero to five seconds. All right, so I plug in the numbers. Uh, plugging zero will be easy, so I'll just plug in five. Plugging in five, I have 155 seconds. I have 150 meters minus zero plus. Uh, plugging in five, five squared, 25, 12.5, then I divide by two. Okay, I can't do that in my head, so let me um, do that in a calculator. Uh, so 31 times 12.5, uh, 387.5. Oh, ah, I shouldn't have hit it, I forgot. 387.5, um, 387.5 meters. So add the two and um, that should be the displacement. So let's plug that in and see if uh, I got it right. Um, uh, oh, okay. So adding the two, I get 537.5. Hopefully it's correct. <laughs> let's see. Um, 